Hey there movie fans, welcome to my Criterion Update of 2016 and we begin with a Japanese masterpiece and that is Kwaidan which means in English uh, spook tale or ghost story um, but this is an amazing film, absolutely an amazing film and you can see there it's a little over three hours but you know I swear there's not one boring moment in it uh, directed by the great Masaki Kobayashi, uh, who who is also responsible for Harakiri, uh, the original version, and uh, the Human Condition trilogy. Um, but yeah, an amazing film. Uh, it's it's an anthology horror film. You know, tell, tells four different stories. Each story takes place in a different uh, season, and. Um, yeah, it's an amazing film and a beautiful release by Criterion uh, with a new 2K uh, print, uh, which, you know, makes this film looks even more amazing. I kind of wish that they did a 4K print of it, uh, you know, me being a little spoiled and all, but, um, you know, a lot of movies nowadays are being restored in 4K. But, you know, the 2K looks amazing, absolutely amazing. So I cannot really complain about that, can I? But uh, yeah, an amazing film. An amazing film. Quite on. Go check it out if you haven't done it yet. Gilda, uh, which is a fantastic film war classic with um, uh, Glenn Ford and the sensational Rita Hayward. She is absolutely amazing. This is definitely her breakthrough role uh, of Gilda and that introduction of her you know, in this film. I was, I was pretty sure if you've seen The Shawshank Redemption, you know which scene I'm talking about. But that introduction is just phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. Um, and it, as you can see, this is a UK release. You know, the, the Criterion Collection has been, you know, for some time now, has been releasing their editions in the UK. And um, there is it's exactly the same as the American ones. The only difference is that is the you know the uh, the rating logo here and on the back as well. I was actually afraid that they will also put a rating logo on the spine, but fortunately they did not do that. You know I like to. It, it would look nice you know without the ratings logo on the spine you know on the shelves and all that. You know, I'm kind of weird like that. But it's a uh, it's a beautiful release and. Uh, yeah, great film, and, and what a woman Rita Hayward was. I mean, if there's, if there's one Hollywood actress who had led a very tragic life, it has to be Rita Hayward, you know. I mean, uh, almost all of the men in her, in her life were scumbags, including her own father, who exploited her and, and physically and sexually abused her. And, um, you know, in the, the last years of her life, she was suffering from Alzheimer's disease. Uh, so, you know, very tragic life that she had. And she was once married to uh, Orson Welles, who was good to her, you know, but she, uh, their marriage wasn't a success. But, uh, yeah, it's a fantastic film, fantastic film. Very nice release. I like the, uh, the pink artwork on the, uh, the disc. And the spine as well, you can see. And there's also, no, this is this is absolutely great. There's also a poster of Rita Hayward. There he is, as Gilda. There's actually a famous quote by uh, Rita Hayward, in which she said, um, kind of like, uh, they fell in love with Gilda but they woke up with me, you know what I mean? <laughs> that was a great, great quote. But yeah, lovely release. Great release and a great film. And a great woman as well. Gilda. And speaking of Rita Hayward, she also had a very small role in this film, Only Angels Have Wings. I believe this was one of her first films uh, that she has done. Um, Cary Grant plays the owner of a uh, South American airmail uh, company and uh, Gene Arthur plays an entertainer 
uh, who is on her way to uh, Panama and she makes a stop at this you know, company uh, but decide to stay because she's she has fallen in love with with uh, Cary Grant's character so there's romance but it's not necessarily a romantic film it's more like a um, like an adventure film you know it's really about the men of this airmail company and uh, their friendship and and the dangers they have to endure while doing their job and it's it's truly a fantastic film by um, uh, Howard Hawks uh, you know another master filmmaker and a nice release as well. I love the the artwork on the uh, the disc there. There's a little artwork on the uh, on the back as well. A nice fold out, you know, thing. They don't do these kind of booklets anymore. They only, they only do these kind of things. But um, yeah, they, they're all right. They're okay. Nice artwork as well. But you know, fantastic film, absolutely fantastic film. Only angels have wings. And speaking of Cary Grant, here he is along with Audrey Hepburn in Charade, which is you know one of the most entertaining films I've ever seen. One of you know, one of the most charming, loveliest, you know, most entertaining films I've ever seen. It's you know how can you not love a film like this? I cannot imagine anyone else not loving this film it's it's you know such a wonderful film uh kind of like a feel-good thriller you know what i mean and it's also known as the best hitchcock film that hitchcock has never made but this film was directed by stanley donan who is uh, best known for his musical work you know like singing in the rain on the town uh, royal wedding seven brides for seven brothers you know those you know those great classic musical films um but yeah, this, this is a wonderful film. Wonderful film. <coughs> a very nice uh, release from uh, Criterion, of course. There's the, uh, the booklet slash uh, fold-out, uh, uh, whatever you want to call it. Uh, great cast as well, of course. You have uh, Walter Metau as, as well, and uh, James Coburn, George Kennedy. Really good cast there. But yeah, fantastic film. Charade. Next is La Ventura by Michelangelo Antonioni. Now this is not the kind of film you can put in your Blu-ray player any time of the week and enjoy. You really have to be in a certain mood for it, you know. And um, <clears throat> it's, um, it's about a, a wealthy young woman named Anna, played by Lea Masari, uh, who goes on a boat trip with her friends and they stop at a small volcanic island and on this island uh, Anna mysteriously disappears so her friends start looking for her and uh, among her friends are her boyfriend Sandro played by uh, Gabriel Fazzetti uh, here he is right there he's best known as Mr. Choo Choo from uh, Once Upon a Time in the West and um, also, uh, Anna's best friend, Claudia, played by Monica uh, Vitti. And as the story progresses, um, these two characters are falling in love with each other while searching for Anna. And that's what the story is really about, um, I think. Oh, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm saying that because I'm, I made a mistake. I, I was concentrated on Anna. You know, I had to... I, all these questions in my head of what could have happened to her while I was watching the rest of the film, you know, did she commit suicide? Uh, did she accidentally fell off a cliff? Uh, was she picked up by someone um, without her friends noticing it? Uh, did she swim to another island without her friends noticing it? You know, did she hide somewhere in the island and, and then it came out until everybody was gone? You know, I was concentrating too much on Anna and not enough on, uh, um, you know, Claudia and, and Sandro, uh, because this film is really about them, uh, even though the first 30 minutes uh, suggests differently. And uh, because of that, I kind of messed up my own uh, viewing experience, you know. And that means that I have to watch this film again and again. 
and again, you know, it's, it's definitely a film that requires uh, uh, multiple viewings. And uh, Antonioni is definitely a required taste. Uh, I mean, I, I'm I'm a big fan of Antonioni. I, I, I think I'm a bigger fan of Antonioni than uh, uh, Vellini, for example. And don't get me wrong, I love Fellini, but Antonioni's films appeals more to me than than Fellini's films. And uh, despite me messing up my uh, viewing experience. Uh, I do think this is a very interesting film and a very beautiful film as well. I mean, the cinematography by Eldo Cafarda uh, is sublime, and and you know thanks to the uh, the 4K restoration, it looks even more sublime. You know, um, but I would definitely check this movie out again uh, and concentrate more on Monica Vitti and uh, Gabriel Fazzetti's characters. You know, La Ventura. Here's another Italian film, and again, a, a gorgeous film as well. Uh, a Special Day by Ettore Scola, who uh, passed away not so long ago. Um, I actually prefer the original title here, Una Giornata Particolare. Uh, I wish they actually they used that one instead of instead of you know a Special Day, but you know. I, I cannot really complain about that. I mean, I, I'm, I'm very happy that the Criterion Collection has released this film on Blu-ray. Um, you know, I, I, I had the DVD, a Dutch DVD, for many years. I've, I've always been hoping that you know, a company like the Criterion Collection w would put this out in blue. And they have done just that. So, you know, I cannot complain about, about you know, the title or, or anything uh, useless like that. Um, oh, what a beautiful film. Beautiful poems is by uh, Marcella Mastriani and uh, Sophia Lorraine. Anyway, this takes place on one day, which is um, the day when uh, Benito Mussolini uh, first met Adolf Hitler in person, you know, in Rome, and it was this big event at the time. Everyone was going to it, everyone wanted to witness, witness this event, you know, this meeting, historic meeting. <coughs> Um, but there were only two people uh, that did not go, and, and those are these two characters who are, you know, drawn to each other. They were strangers, but they, they have a connection with each other, and uh, um, yeah, I don't want to give too much away, so I'm, I'm not going to say anything about it. It's, just, it's a movie you really have to see. It's, it's a very, very beautiful film, a very moving film, a very touching film. Interestingly enough, there, one of the children that, uh, you know, who plays uh, Sophia Loren's children, uh, you know, one of S S Sophia Loren's daughters, uh, her name is Alessandra Mussolini, and she was the granddaughter of Benito Mussolini, and she is also the niece of Sophia Loren. Uh, she plays, um, I believe her character's name is Maria Luisa. And um, yeah, she, she, she did some acting jobs, uh, you know, early in her life. Uh, but nowadays she is in politics. But yeah, very happy that this has gotten the release, the Blu-ray release, that it deserves. Nice release there. There's a little picture there of... Uh, from the from the film, yeah, very beautiful. A special day. And here's yet another Italian film, uh, a bit different than the previous two ones, um, Salo or the 120 Days of Sodom, by Pier Paolo Pasolini. Um, I mean, I, I'm I'm sure you can call this the most controversial film of all time, right? I mean, is there a film that's even more controversial than this one? I doubt it. Um, but this is a very nice release. Yeah, with this uh, one disc, digi pack, a picture on the other side there. And of course the, uh, the booklet there. <coughs> I can show the whole thing. Of course you see some nudity and all that. Some graphic contents. 
I actually read somewhere that uh, Roger Ebert, you know, the, the late great film critic Roger Ebert, has never seen this film. You know, he owned it on Laserdisc, but he never actually had the nerve to watch it. And I think that says enough about the reputation of this film, right? I mean, so, somebody like Ebert, who has seen, who has seen it all, you know, has seen all the films, and he doesn't dare to watch this. That's pretty much says it all about the uh, the reputation of Sado. But um, yeah, it's 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 well, I, I wouldn't say it's a fantastic film, but it's it's an interesting one. You know, it's a fascinating film, definitely. Uh, I wouldn't al I wouldn't also call it pornographic because you know a lot of people accused of this film uh, of being pornographic is is not is not really. But it's not uh, you, it's not a feel good film. <laughs> but uh, anyway, yeah, and P Pasolini, as uh, you know, some you know, was uh, killed just before the release of the film, which makes it you know the reputation of the film even more. Um, um, controversial, obviously, but yeah, Salo. Uh, here's a g very beautiful release, um, Dr. Strange Love or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb. Very nice artwork here. Now, I believe I own this movie, uh, let's see, now. I, I believe this is the fifth time that I own this film. Yeah, I, I think it is, four, four or five times now. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I just wanted to get this one, uh, because this is a nice release, you know, beautiful, uh, uh 4K transfer, um, interesting, um, uh, documentaries, documentaries as well. I believe some of them were also in the previous release, um, but a nice package there, uh, slim pickings on the, uh, on the, uh, the atomic bomb there. Nice pictures there, and uh, of course you got these lots of some goodies inside, like this letter and the um, this little booklet there. Peter Sellers as a Doctor Strange Love, one of the three characters that he portrays in the film. And this also has this one. This is very nice. <clears throat> Holy Bible and Russian phrases, you know, just like in the movie. I absolutely love that. Very nice, very nice. See, you get the cast members there uh, and the credits. I I like how how they've uh, how they've done that. But the most beautiful release of this update is definitely. This one, The New World by Terrence Malick. I mean, look at the, uh, the artwork. The artwork looks stunning, absolutely stunning. And so is the artwork on the, uh, on the um, DigiPack itself, as you can see there. Three disc, and there's, you know, each one has a different version of, of the film. I did not know there was three different versions of the film. Uh, but anyway, you have the um, uh, theatrical cut, you have the first cut, and the extended cut. Um, the one that I prefer is the extended cut, you know, which is the longest one, uh, which is 172 minutes. I believe the other ones are, the yeah, theatrical, theatrical cut is uh, 135 minutes, and the first cut is 150 minutes. But I prefer the, uh, you know, the... Uh, uh, the extended one. Nice booklet there. And what a gorgeous looking film, right? The um, the cinematography by um, a Motherwell Lebeski is just amazing. Lebeski is without a doubt one of the best uh, uh, cameramen uh, out there. I mean, he won three Oscars in a row, believe it or not. He, he won it for Gravity, Birdman, and The Revenant. You know, three years in a row, uh, which is fantastic. And he deserved it as well. But then, you know, on the other side, I was thinking, there's, uh, there's another 
brilliant cinematographer, uh, Roger Deakins. He was nominated 13 times and he never won once. So what the hell is that all about? It's about time that man should should get, uh, you know, a lot of Oscars and hopefully he get one uh, next year or the, maybe the year after that for, for you know, Blade Runner 2, for example. I don't know. But, uh, you know, give Roger he's, he, uh, Deacons his Oscar already. He has taken too long. Um, yeah, sorry, I'm, I'm rambling. Sorry about that. Uh, but gorgeous race, and and the film looks absolutely magnificent. You know, thanks to the 4K restoration there. Beautiful, beautiful looking film, and a beautiful looking addition. Uh, uh, the New World. And that was it for my Criterion update. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye.